The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. The April 12th, the Fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. I'd love to hear from you at 877-927-6648. But look, you might have a question you can't call in. We've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please uh, put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We've got a sea of red out there. The only uh, yeah, two uh, sectors inside the S&P trading the upside. Energy sector, it makes sense. You've got lights recruit up a couple of percent, nearly 3% out there. And you've got the XL, XLU, the utility sector, which is basically flat as we speak. But the indices are trading the downside. 1% for the Dow, 373 points. 1% for the S&P, 57 points. 1.5% for the NASDAQ, 266 points. The Russell's down 25, one and a quarter percent. Nearly 3% for the semis, 137-point move there. Gold is up 68 bucks, nearly 3%. Silver's up a buck 50, 5.5%. Lights we crude is up 220, two and a half percent. Natural gas is flat, and the 30-year Treasury is up almost one point, printed out at 116.05. Our leaders in the clubhouse to the upside are Argon Inc. up 11 bucks, 22 percent move there. Globe Life seven bucks, 13, 14 percent. Northrop Grumman five bucks, one and a quarter. Q32 Bio don't know what it is, but it's up 23 percent. Nice move there. And then you've got, um, of course, you've got the GLD. That's up uh, quite a bit. To the downside, it is MicroStrategy off 50 bucks. Broadcom down 42. Super Micro down 32. Asthma Holdings off 33. Lamb Research down 28 out there. So we got plenty to look at. We do have plenty to look at out here, that's for sure. But let's start by taking a look at. Um, Let's come take a look at these equity futures here. So uh, we can see that right now with regard to the ES Mini, we haven't taken out yesterday's high, haven't taken out yesterday's low. So we're kind of an inside bar, the same inside the NQ. That's not the same inside the Dow Equity Future Contract. So in the case of the Dow Equity Future Contract, today is going to become bar number nine of a TD9 count bottom pattern out there. Yep. And so the Dow Equity Future Contract is suggesting, let me just get back to another chart out here on my other screen. I just want to make sure I'm giving you the accurate information. Yeah, today's going to become bar number nine. Monday would be the bar following bar number nine. That says that the Dow Equity Future Contract should form a bottom between today and tomorrow out there. We'd have to take a look at the intraday chart, see if there's any signals of such. In the case of the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000 actually is back near its breakout level, which is at 2034 even Stephen. We're trading just below that right now at 2030, but watch 2034. When we get back to a breakout level, that can be a bottom. Now, the NQ's already got a bottom. In order for the NQ to take out that, it needs to close below 18051. What we don't have out here is anything inside of the ES Mini out here to show us that there's any kind of a uh, bottom signal out there. So that's the only perplexing thing we take a look at. The ES, excuse me, that was weird, versus the um, versus the other uh, three out there. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily time frame chart. Um, what else do we want to go look at? 
let's go over to my white background chart. Start surfing around there. So if you give me a moment, we're going to change our screens out here. There's the daily. You can see here, you can see on the bottom right, that breakout level, that 2034 level. And you can see we're in bar number nine. As price is approaching its breakout level inside of the Dow, down at 37,985. So let's go take a look at... Um, Let's look at some intraday charts out here. So let's take a look at the ES Mini. We'll start there. We take a look at the ES Mini. What we do know is yesterday, as price was making its lows, we take a look at the four hour, the two hour, the one hour chart out there. It was forming roads, momentum indicator bottom patterns out there. So it's those lows that are going to be key. Uh, that low, by the way, that you'd be really watching for is at 51.7350. Uh, so if price closed below that in the ES Mini, well, that would suggest. Um, I would suggest we may even see lower lows than that out there. But at the moment on the real intraday charts, when I say real intraday charts, 10 and 15 minutes, they're certainly trying to flex their muscles out here. But I'm not seeing a ton just yet. I see a bunch of resistance up top. But if we did get a 15 minutes, that's three minutes from now. If we did get a bullish reversal candle, you've got a piercing candle as we speak right now inside of the 15 minute chart. You could easily get a rally up to 51.98. If price were to close above 51.98, the next uh, next battle would be 5206. Above that would be 5213. So those would be levels to watch. Uh, what's the probability of price getting up there? Not sure. And take a look at the ES mini charts. Maybe we need to take a look at the NQ charts. So let's go. Let's go do that. Give me a moment. Now it's going to take a moment here to populate. And the reason it is because I've got so many different applications and charts that are open out there, but uh, not too fast. So what we do know about again the daily time frame. Nice TD nine count bottom. It was tested a few days ago. That level is held. Again, that level being 1805150. And I thought that would be enough time for these other charts to populate. As I mentioned, I've got a bunch of stuff open. So anticipating that we might want to take a look at gold's charts and light speed crude charts and silver charts out there. So I've got those things already in the hopper, so to speak. Now we take a look at the NQ. I know that on a 30 minute basis, and when it populates, you'll see that it did negate a TD nine count bottom pattern for its 30 minute time frame. Question is, is there any other kind of a pattern that is out there as we speak right now? It looks to me like we are in leg number F, that's letter uh, letter F, uh, that's wave number six out there. So maybe that will go ahead and form. And we're also in bar number eight that is forming. So there's some potential potential there. I see the 60 minute chart is going to, is very likely gonna go ahead and confirm a TD nine count bottom pattern as we get to the noon hour. That pattern would complete by one o'clock. Um, so I pay attention to the NQ out there. And speaking of the NQ, because of the directional correlation between the NQ and the DAX, so this morning he had the DAX up about 160 points or so. That was maybe about 7.30, 8 o'clock. Let's go take a look at the DAX. And then it sold off quite a bit. So I just want to take a look at its charts. I think uh, the DAX closes in 15 minutes or an hour and 15 minutes. I don't recall the exact time out there. But we, and we can figure that out on the charts. But we do take a look at the DAX out here. And I'm looking at the uh, daily time, the weekly time frame, actually. So the weekly time frame has a TD9 count top out there. And right now, if price does close the end of the day below its oscillator and change line, this is the DAX we're taking a look at, is at 17,980, 17,964. 17,964. So watch that when the DAX closes. When does the DAX close? U.S. time. Stevie will try to figure that out. We'll finish looking at these charts. We come back to the break. Then we're going to take a look at AAP, IOT, the UVXY, Gene, Gurn, the Euro, and anything else that you'd like as well. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. We'll take a look at the uh, charts here for the German DAX. It does close at 12.30, so another hour and about 15 minutes worth of trading out there. And because of its directional correlation, strong directional correlation with the NDX 100, sometimes we can learn something from this. So what you'd want to watch in the daily time frame, and the charts are similar patterns uh, as well. You've got a TD9 count top on the uh, DAX. You've got a T for its weekly time frame, same for the NDX 100. You've got a TD9 count top on the daily time frame, same for the NDX 100. Now, the NDX 100 over the last four or five days has traded stronger than the uh, DAX, but that could be more of an indication of uh, inflows of capital. But nonetheless, you want to watch the 17, 9, 14, uh, 18 level inside of the DAX at 1230 if price closes above that, then what you would know, at least for the daily time frame, is support will have held out there. Whereas if price closes below that and the weekly chart would then still be be below its green asset and change line, that may be telling us about another week to the uh, downside out here, potentially, for the uh, U.S. markets out there. So that's what I see with the DAX. I'm going to go ahead and close this off, and then we're going to go take a look at, um, let's uh, first take a look at, let's take a look at a couple of instruments from yesterday. Let's gonna try to, we'll try to stick this in order out here. Oh, this is not what I was looking at, but let's look at this anyways, as long as we're here. Everything in life is happening for us. So we take a look at Goldilocks, upper left-hand side. What you'll see out there is that a close above 2372.50, which is a likely outcome today, is gonna negate its daily TD9 count top. You'll also see bar number eight on a weekly time frame. That says gold still could top between this week and the next two weeks out there. I don't think the top is this week, but anything is possible out there. And that's what the weekly chart is saying. In the case of silver, you can see the weekly chart is going to go ahead and confirm a TD9 count top this week. That says that perhaps the top comes in at today, or it could be next week for its weekly time frame. If I take a look at the daily time frame and get this to the current uh, date out here, you're going to see that it's negating its TD9 count top. And all it needs is a close above the high from two days ago. That would be out of 28.65 in order to do that. So you'd want to watch that out there. In the case of the GDX, it just needs a close above the bar from uh, back on April the 9th. 
That high is at 34.59 in order to gain its TD nine count top. Now you can see on a weekly basis that price has made it way back to where it had broken down from. It broke down from 35.81. The actual high so far that we've seen today has been 35.74. Now if price can close above, this is the key level really, if price can close above 36.26, do with more than 128 million shares on a weekly basis. So far this week, we've seen 127 million shares. So certainly if you see a rally at the end of the day and you were to see the GDX close above 36.26, that would trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside, likely, takes us, likely to take us back to the 2022 highs in the $42 area. So that's a kind of a short-term view of the GDX gold and silver. We can take a look at the gold and silver charts in more detail a little bit later on, uh, time permitting, uh, out there. So I'm just going to go ahead and shut these charts down since we've covered these instruments. And then where was DB going to go? I was going to just simply go back to the requests that have come in. So let me let me get back there. We don't need to take a look at these charts. And yesterday we talked about advanced auto parts. That was for SNP. You can see we were talking about the TD9 count pattern. Today is going to be bar number nine out there. What I don't see out here is anything on a short-term basis just yet to indicate that today is at bottom. What I mean by that is if we're going to see a bottom when a daily when a daily chart is generating some kind of top or bottom signal right now let's just stick with the bottom signal what we should see is we should see bottom patterns form on the intraday charts doesn't have to be each of them doesn't mean it has to be on the 15 and the 30 and the 65 and the 130 and the 195 uh, it's nice when you see them on all of those charts but certainly you want to start seeing them on some here's the 30 minute time frame chart out there we don't see that we see a signal but we don't see a confirmed bottoming pattern so i would say this s p maybe it's uh, best to wait until a uh, monday to see how advanced auto parts trade. So just a quick update on that. Also one on IoT for uh, Jay and Boki. He did write back and said he did take a uh, long position here. We told him that the uh, TD9 count pattern was uh, confirming yesterday. It's going to go ahead and complete today. So whatever the low of the pattern is, out there right now, it's a low from a couple of days ago. If you were to see a close below that low, that low being 31.76, not a test, not a spike, but a close below that low, then the reason to have gotten into the trade will have vanished. Otherwise, we should see a rally. That first target would be 33.27, the bottom of its daily profile. Uh, there was a question to take a UVXY. I don't know how we're going to do that. I'm going to switch over to my black background screens out here. But the UVXY is hard to really trade. I find it hard to trade. The only way I've been able to find a way to trade the UVXY is to go down to like a three-minute time frame, four-minute time frame. Let me see if I can pull open those charts here, see if I can easily find them. I do have a few I do have a few uh, charts, so to speak, but usually it'll pop right out. i got to get to the U's, though. So where is the UVXY trading page? There you go. So this will pop open. And uh, now one thing I can say, I believe the spot politics right now is trading with a one-day rate of change about plus 10%. We'll come back to that. So here's the UVXY. And this is set to three minutes out there. And the only way that I found is a good, a, a, a decent way to trade this instrument is to really pay attention to the very short term signals out here and to use market profiles. So as an example, what I have out here is a three minute time frame. We can see the gap up uh, from this morning and we don't have right now what we have is price testing a key level of support. Now it's three minutes out there. So we're talking about, you know, super, super de duper de, um, uh, you know, short term signals. But nonetheless, it's the best. It's one of the best. Maybe it's not three. Maybe it's four. Maybe it's five out there. Switch greens. I did switch greens. Huh. OK, let's go ahead and switch screens again. That was weird. What did I do? OK, thank you, though. Uh, thank you, uh, ABCD, Dan. So here now you can see the UVXY. You can see the market profiles. We can see that price is testing uh, um, the bottom of its uh, profile on a three-minute basis, the bottom being 38.51. It suggests if you see a close below that, you'd expect to actually flip this position from an intraday standpoint. I don't know. what I don't remember what that instrument is called because I don't trade it, but that's a three-minute. Here, if we put a five-minute chart up on our screen out here, we put a five-minute chart, what do we have? At this stage here... Um, and here's a, here's an example of a five minute chart and how that if you take a look at the UVXY, take a listen coming back to yesterday around 10 in the morning. See how price never took out the top of a uh, profile out there. 
not until this morning when price had gapped up. Again, uh, it's these, these profile levels is what I have found in trading this instrument here to be the best from a short-term standpoint. If I put up the daily time frame, which we've got up here right now, um, I'm really not sure how to tell you how to uh, trade this. And now my other system out there, I think there was uh, maybe there's a split that's going on. It hasn't really adjusted itself, which is why I'm on these black background uh, charts. Uh, but you trade it a lot. That's no problem. So the mere fact, uh, SO, that you trade this a lot out there, and I'm showing you these profile levels, it may be something worth investing in if you trade this a lot. So the only other thing that I can really share, I'm going to go ahead and close this down right now. We'll close this. Although the next time I open up, it'll open up and it'll be at the daily time frame. And it is the three minute. But uh, the only other thing that I can share with you is... Or another thing that I can share with you before we go to this breakout here is the spot volatility. So right now we've got a one day rate of change. Oh, we don't. We got a one day rate of change. Oh, 14. No, 21%. Uh, yeah. So you typically, and if we have a one day rate of change about plus 10% out there, where is that page? Right here. All these mark one day rates of change above plus 10%, below 10%. Go explore that. Typically, you get a one-day rate of change about plus 10%. You'll see that UVXY start to head lower. You'll see a bounce or rally. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Tigers, we have some exciting news. Live Trading Fridays are here. Join Larry Pesavento every second and fourth Friday of the month, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time, as he places short-term trades and gives insights into his strategies. That's right. That means the first Live Trading Fridays event starts this Friday, April 12th. Make sure to sign up so you don't miss the potential for huge gains. If you've attended Larry's stellar webinars before, you'll be familiar with the Live Trading portion. Live Trading Fridays will be strictly this portion. That's three hours of pure trading. All trade positions will be communicated clearly, and all questions will be answered in a timely fashion during these live events. When signing up, make sure to save $50 by using code LARRYLIVE at checkout. This code is valid only for this month, and the discount stays with you for as long as you're a subscriber to the service, so don't delay. Sign up, sit back, and follow Larry Pesavento as he places trades live. See you there, Tigers. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. 
They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. We've seen gold uh, come off of its highs right now. The only chart that I had, a, uh, a topping pattern, an easy one for me to spot, was the 10-minute uh, chart. 10-minute chart has a Rogemintum indicator top. It was formed with that nice little dark cloud cover candle. And we have price right now that's pulling back to its breakout level. So 2409.30, which it's about to hit or just did hit out there, that's a key area to watch. Your price closes below that and because we don't have a bottoming pattern, but you can't get back to a breakout level. That can be a bottoming pattern. Then that would bring the 2394 level into place. So now when we back this chart off, take get, get rid of the 5-minute, 10-minute, I'm sorry, get rid of the 10-minute chart, and come over and take a look at the other time frames. Here on a 30-minute time frame chart, I don't have a topping pattern. I don't see an A to B equals CD pattern that I would use out here for gold on this 30-minute time frame. So uh, that says that price could be pulling back to 2388.60. That would be another level of support. It is below the bottom of its 30-minute profile as we speak right now. So that says uh, in the 10 minute chart right now certainly seems to have sliced right through that 2409 level. So that becomes another area of support again on the 30 minute time frame. The level that we are watching out there, or the level we will watch out there, is 2388. But again, no topping patterns on these time frames. So that simply just says we've got to be taking a look at support areas out there. And uh, 2379 on the 60 minute, 2388 on the 30 minute time frame chart out there. And those are those are what I'd be looking at. You can see on a five hour basis and a four hour basis, prices test in the area of support. Now there could be a TD nine count top on the four hour time frame, but that's going to take uh, this part. Bar, that we wouldn't know that until the end of the uh, trading session today. So I can see some levels of support out here uh, on that uh, four and five era. Hour. So if those areas fail, then we start taking a look at the 2388, the 2379 uh, area. Let's go out to uh, Martinez, California and speak with Brent. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm doing quite well, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thanks so much for asking. And G triple R is what you'd like to take a look at. I'll get those charts up, but tell the folks what you're doing and how I can best help you. We've talked about this in the past. I bought into it that day that it had the big and a huge volume, I think 120 some million shares and back in February. But I sold out that day. I think mean, it doubled in a single day. So I just took my money and I've been watching it, you know, to see if it could come back. It did have a gap up a few days ago last week that got filled. And then what I've been waiting to see if it might do is come down and there's a gap, you know, that day when it had the big wide ranging candle. Yes, and it got close to it yesterday. I mean, it really didn't fully close it because there's still like I want to say that previous yes. day it was 57 was the high, 57 cents roughly, almost 58, and then yes. yesterday it got down to 59 cents. So it didn't quite do it. I just want to get your thoughts on, you know, is this was that actually enough, or what do you think about it? Yeah, so good question. What we'll do to try to answer that question is actually go take a look at some intraday charts, Brent. So just give me a moment here. So the volume on that that candle session, uh, or a candle session that could potentially be a B point of an A to B equals CD to the downside, if that's even possible out here. I just want to take a look at the volume, was from uh, March the 8th. Volume there was 1.5 million shares, and it was passed with uh, 5 million shares. And then yesterday it had 2.1 million shares. So uh, that's the battle. The question is, which of these two patterns might unfold out here? So when I, I'm just going to open up the daily time frame chart since that's really the only one, well, really worth taking a look at. But I need to even back this off. So what Brent's talking about, if we take a look at the trading session for February 5th, gaps up with 126 million shares. So that should be support. Um, and when I say that should be support, really at the uh, at the low of the, the gap or the high of the trading session for February 20th. And that's where Brent was mentioning the 58 pennies out there. Um, so let's look at it. Let me just uh, let me look at a short term time frame chart. So as I mentioned earlier in the show, if we're going to see a bottoming pattern occur on a daily time frame, we should see bottoming signals on the intraday charts. So let's just simply begin with a 30-minute time frame. 
And if you're asking me, do I see any kind of a bottoming pattern out here, it would be the buy the D point pattern. Certainly we can see a couple of different A to B equals CD patterns out here. There was a hammer candle at the low on a 30 minute basis. That was 11 o'clock on April the 11th. Right now you have price trading above profile out there. So it's got on a 30 minute basis a profile change in trend. I don't see any other resistance up top out here. So the 30 minute chart is giving you a buy signal. I assume that the 15 minute chart would do the same, but let's just simply go take a look and confirm that. And sure enough, it does. We're not going to pay attention to the oscillator and change line. That's going to stay with the 30 minute time frame unless I go in there and manually change that. And I'm not going to. We don't need to. So here in a 30 minute time frame, I'm sorry, 15 minute, you had a nice bottoming, roads meant to indicator bottom. So now let's go up a level. That next level that I'd be looking at would be 65 minutes. And on a 65 minute time frame chart, what do we have? We have another buy the D point pattern. Looks like it maybe was a one to two or one to 1.618, but nonetheless, that did form a buy pattern. That was at 1140. So this is now inside a bullish structured profile, Brent. And this says that if price is able to close above for two consecutive bars, 65 cents, we're at 65 cents right now. But if price can close above that on two consecutive bars on a 65 minute time frame, this bar, by the way, is gonna go ahead and complete at 1140, four minutes from now, and then the next bar 65 minutes afterwards, that would suggest at least to run to 70 cents. And if price could take out 70 cents, the 65 minute chart would give you a profile change in trend. Let's try one more time frame. that would be 130 minutes. And on the 130 minute time frame chart, we've got a TD nine count bottom pattern out there. Um, Yes, we certainly do. Or you've got a wave number seven. Either way, you've got a bottoming signal here. And this also suggests that close above 65 cents would get you up to 71. So based on that information, again, just really narrating the charts for you, um, what, say, what say you? Well, that's definitely helpful, Steve. I, if you wouldn't mind, <clears throat> when you were on the daily chart, did yeah. it make it down? It looked like it did. It's sometimes a little tricky seeing the charts, but... Um, you have a breakout level on the daily, that green line that's going across. Did, did it make it down to that yesterday? It did not. It did not. It did not. So that's really, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah I know. I know. <laughs> I, but, the, but, the, but the thing is, it's, it's close. It may be close enough. Um, and, and so if we if we had gone through, you and I had gone through those intraday charts and we didn't see clear signals, then my answer would be much easier. I'd say, no, I don't think it's made it. But now that it's made, at least it adds that evidence, that piece of information for you. Um, you know, it, this is a tough one. And it's a tough one because I could actually write in an A to B equals CD to the downside. Now, I think that probably puts us out of business. So that's not realistic. But this would be the A to B point. And we know that the B point was passed with volume on the way down. So, uh, you know, this would actually give you a one to one price projection of about 34 cents out there. Um, is that the pattern that's in play out here? I don't know. We're we're kind of stuck between those two patterns that we're taking a look at, getting back to a breakout area on lighter volume. But the intraday charts are certainly telling you that it is trying to make a turn here. Whether that'll be successful or not, I don't know. Um, that's all that I can see. Brett, is there anything else, Brent, that I could perhaps look at for you or provide for you? I did have one other question, so I guess I'll just hold and until and the break. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, is it a specific instrument that I can uh, pull up on the screen? It's uh, L-A-E-S. Perfect. Okay. We come back to the break. We're going to take a look at L-A-E-S with Brent in Martinez, California. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got ticker symbol LAES at Seal Square Corp. Maybe that's the name of it, uh, Brent. And uh, looks to me like it's uh, going to go ahead and form a TD9 count bottom pattern today. It'll complete that pattern on uh, Monday. It'll co it'll confirm that pattern today as long as price closes below $1.33 and you're at a buck twenty-five uh, right now. Um, I do see, and I've got the daily time frame chart. There's only been one day. One day since uh, February 8th, where price has closed above the oscillator and change line. That day was uh, March the 11th, and then the very next day we got back below that. And that's currently trading at buck 30. So that's going to be one of your key lines of demarcation as to whether or not this thing has changed its trend. Even if it can close above a buck 30, that oscillator and change line, that may change by a penny or two. This would still have battles overhead. The first battle would be at a buck 44. And the next battle would be in a zone because it's a bearish structured profile at the moment. And that zone is between 168 and 183. Now, Brent, I didn't allow you to ask a question yet, but since I had the chart up there, I thought we'd go ahead and give you a good overview of what I see. Um, what what question is it, or how can I help you additionally? No, that's good. Is, is there a level down lower to get to, Steve? Is there a breakout area like there was on Gorilla? And, and actually, I meant to ask you, we kind of got to that break. I didn't have a chance to ask what that level was on Gorilla. I couldn't really see it on the chart. Was it 57, sure. 58? I, I couldn't see. So uh, I, I'll go. I'll, I'll put those charts up on on my screen. Uh, the breakout level would really come from the weekly time frame, which has a TD9 count top, and that's at a buck, dollar one dollar even, Stephen. So I don't see anything on the uh, daily, um, and uh, but that would be the level that I would look at would be a dollar. Again, you're at a buck twenty five. So I uh, should get a confirmed TD nine count top today, a completed pattern on Monday, and that oscillator and change on will really be the useful tool for you as to whether or not this thing has got some traction to the upside. At least that's what I believe. Um, how can I do GRR real quick? Uh, that's okay. You'll just have to. You're just, just going to have to wait, Brent. So. Uh, well, um, let me any, ask you something before you leave the charts. Maybe I oh, might have oh, already oh, done it. Uh oh, it's, it's yeah, okay. okay. It's okay. 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 Right. What 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 was what was the question? Maybe I can look at it. Oh, this well, when you're on the weekly chart, I was going to ask you if what uh, I think it's since uh, number seven on the weekly, but I'm ah, okay. not positive about that. Okay. Yeah. The so the daily, chart. yeah, the daily, the, the daily chart, the breakout level is at forty nine cents. So okay. the green line is all right. So it's down lower, yeah. quite a bit lower. All right. Yeah, yeah. 
quite 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 a bit uh, lower down there. So again, you know, it's back to that breakout. The intradays are certainly telling you it's trying to make that turn, and you can see that in the daily bar as well out there. Um, so that's what I've got for you, Brent. And always great to uh, speak to you. And thanks so much for uh, calling in. And uh, have a fabulous weekend. And uh, at some point in time, if I've got the time, I'll pull that uh, chart <coughs> back up for LAES and see what the weekly time frame is. I'll do oh, it. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it, Steve. No, I'll not, do it. Not a problem. Yeah, but I can do it during the next break. And then when I come back from that break, I'll be able to tell you. All righty. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Steve, have yourself <clears throat> a great day and a great weekend. And appreciate so much, you know, all your help. Going, you bet. You know, very thorough and, and take care of everything that I ask you to do. So just have a Absolutely. great day. Thank you. You too. That was Brent de Martinez, California. Dan inside the Tiger's Den would like to take a look at ticker symbol G-E-N-E. -E. And on a daily time frame, Dan, this thing looks uh, very good. I don't see any kind of a topping pattern. Uh, there's probably an A to B equals CD pattern out there. But it does look like it wants to. It's in breakout mode. It's above. It's also in change line, which is green on the top of its profile. The weekly time frame in bar number seven has got overhead resistance. It's gotten up towards that level, that level being $3.75 out there. I don't see any reasons right now in the charts to suggest that it's not going to go approach that area. So 375 is going to be your next stop. If it can get above that, then you're looking at 408 and 515. So that's what I see when I take a look at the genie. G-E-N-E. -E. Let's go take a look at your next request. The next request was to take a look at GERN, G-E-R-N. On the daily time frame, this is also in a breakout mode. Why is it in a breakout mode? Price is above profile resistance. Price is above the green oscillator and change line. The weekly time frame is in that same condition, only being in bar number seven. This suggests that this wants to rally further. And on a monthly time frame, what GERN is doing is dealing with what I presume is its all-time high, but let me just pull this back. No, I'm wrong about that. It's really with a recent high out here, and that recent high was from the month of January of 2023. So you'd love to see price close above that. That's at 384. We're at 386 right now. But, you know, it's trading above resistance out here. So I don't see anything negative with regard to either Gene or Gern. And I would definitely stay with those positions. Now, on a 30-minute, not a 30, a 130-minute basis, I do see a TD9 count pattern that is going to go ahead and complete at uh, 1350, 150 this afternoon. That pattern will complete. So that could be telling you you're getting ready for some type of short-term pullback out there. But that's all that I see when I take a look at uh, GERN. So I hope that helps you out. Peter wanted to take a look at the euro. So let's get down to the euro's charts out here. The euro is looking like it's a good time for Americans to be traveling to Europe this summer. What do I mean by that? Well, we've got a large A to B equals CD pattern that is in play out here. So here's the weekly time frame. We'll just simply open that up. I'll draw the pattern on this. It'll be a little bit easier for everybody to see what's going on out here. So let's go ahead and draw in that A to B line. And then what we will do is we'll just simply go ahead and move this over to the C point out here. That's the high that occurs after that B point forms. Looks like there's the high. So the one-to-one -one says that we should see price get back to test its weekly TD9 count bottom. That was back in October, October 6th to be exact. And that's anywhere from the range of 1.04 up to 1.060 out there. So we we haven't gotten to the uh, to the high of that candle. So that's headed lower. Maybe it's even headed lower than that. But that's at least the one to one A to B equals C D pattern to the downside. We take a look at the daily time frame. That's confirming that signal out there, Peter, because we are negating a TD nine count bottom and a breakout level. When I look at a 30 minute time frame chart, I do not see any kind of a bottom pattern out here. The price has been able to regain that oscillator and change line. So you could easily see the euro rally up to 1.067, I'm sorry, 1.064, 1 1.065, or 1.066 out there. On a 60 minute time frame, um, maybe it's trying to form a buy the D point pattern. The same could be said, perhaps. Let me see. Let me first see if I see that A to B equals C D pattern. And not really. Yeah, I don't even see that in the short term time frame chart out there. So that just says we've got to be paying attention to resistance levels out there. The 240-minute chart and the five-hour chart. Okay, so if the, uh, if, the, if the dollar is not going to take off to the upside, the euro is going to find some kind of support out here, it's going to do that on the four- and five-hour time frame chart. If we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, this one I'd focus in on at the moment, uh, uh, this candle is going to close at 1,300 hours. So that is at 1 p.m. So at 1 p.m., Peter, if the euro is trading below 1.0643, right to the tick, right to the pip, if it's trading below that, then it's a five-hour 
Uh, TD Nike out bottom will have failed, and that would most certainly suggest lower price, and that would be higher price for the uh, dollar out there. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the euro. And as always, thanks so much for calling in. Now, the the yen has got an A to B equals CD to the upside. And the pound has got an A to B equals CD to the downside. Both of those are weakening themselves versus the U.S. dollar index. I'll put those charts up on our screen as we go to breakout here. Or I'm going to try to put them up on our screen. Where is it? Right here. If you look at the... Oh, that's the wrong screen. I'm going to try to do it. Where? Here we go. So if you look at the bottom panel out here, Peter, you're going to see the A to B equals CD to the downside for the euro. The A to B equals CD to the upside for the yen. That'll weaken. And the A to B equals CD to the downside for the pound out here. It really does look like this U.S. dollar index has no intention of giving up its strength anytime soon. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Hope you're right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got the charts up for SBSW. This is for George in Tampa. And uh, George is looking for a sell point. So you actually have a TD9 count top for your daily time frame out here. That formed uh, four days ago on the trading session of April the 9th. It actually completed that pattern yesterday once we got to the bar plus bar number seven. Now, that swing point, it's also a swing point out here, has volume of 12.7 million shares. We've been trading for about two and a half hours, and this is up with five, six million shares. So this is moving into that swing point with volume. If price closes inside that swing point, and that is a good possibility, then odds favor that that high high will get tested. If the high gets closed above, 
That's at 593. Then you don't want to be shorting this because a TD9 count top will have been negated. If price can get up and it can test 593, that means get up to 594 or greater. Close back below 593 and do it with less than 12.7 uh, million shares. And maybe you've got something for a short. But what I would tell you is uh, price could still be, it's uh, going to be likely above its green asset and change sign. Those are bullish conditions. And if it doesn't uh, get back below 567, the top of its daily profile, it becomes kind of suspect in taking the short. Why? If you look at the weekly time frame, price is going to, it has a road momentum indicator bottom pattern, and price looks like it's going to close above the top of its weekly profile, 555. Now, price did close above the top of that profile once before. It was back in December, uh, December 22nd. Then the following week, it got back down below that, but still closing above that. No, we're looking at a daily time frame. Should give you pause to go ahead and uh, short this uh, instrument. It looks like you've also got a monthly TD9 count bottom with price inside its profile. So I wouldn't be shorting it today. I'd wait for a test, a rejection of at least that swing point out there, and maybe you get that on uh, Monday. So, uh, George, hope that helps you out. To finish off the show, uh, what can I share with you? Well, but the only thing I could really share with you is simply to let you know, uh, with regard to the market, that today the NQ, the NASDAQ 100, we'll put up its intraday charts for you uh, right now. Um, the NQ has made a new all time high today in terms of euros, in terms of yen, and in terms of Great British Pound. It hasn't done that in terms of dollars. But if you're wondering why maybe there could be a bounce that takes place out there, that's because there's a lot of foreign capital coming here to the good old U.S. of A. So, folks, have a fabulous weekend, fantastic Friday. Thanks so much for joining me. I look forward to speaking with you again on Monday. Take care and be safe out there.